Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. It's Christmas time, it's that time of the year, and we are excited to bring you another show. And Christmas, it has some connotations to Christ. We believe in Christ, we love Christ. Christ simply means the Messiah. In Hebrew, Messiah, this is Jesus. Jesus the Messiah, we love him, he's so dear to our heart. And this holiday revolves around him. So we want to help our brothers in humanity understand the Muslim viewpoint and we also want Muslims to understand Christmas a little bit better so we're gonna be here with our next guest Dr. Seville here on the Dean Show don't go anywhere this is the Dean, the Dean Show this is the Dean Show this is the Dean, this is the Dean Show Thank you for tuning in to The Dean Show. We're here with Dr. Sabil. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Barakatuh. Peace be with you. You too, brother. Thank you for finding the time to be with us to talk about this very important topic. Christmas, it involves Jesus, who we love, respect, one of the mightiest messengers of God. No Muslim is a Muslim unless you believe in Jesus. Some people are like, well, then why aren't you guys celebrating Christmas with us? Why are we, why are we covering this topic? It's a very important topic because it revolves around Jesus Christ, peace be upon him who we love, admire, and respect. So it's a very important topic that uh, not only we should speak about Jesus Christ in the Quran, we should examine the teachings of Jesus from the biblical point of view and from historical point of view, so we could present a better picture to our audience, inshallah. Now, many people are in the holiday spirit, you know, they're shopping, they're celebrating, and many people aren't thinking like, really, what's Christmas all about? S many people believe as, you know, that Jesus was born on this day. Many people believe that he's God. You know, we love, as I said, you know, we are not trying to offend anybody. We just want people to understand things a little bit better because some people are just going with the flow and they're not really investigating these things or looking into them. So many Muslims are also saying, what's the problem? We love Jesus. Why don't we just celebrate Christmas too? So let's talk a little bit about the origins and the history from the Bible and also from history itself and kind of just give people an educated response to where Christmas came from. Wonderful, wonderful. Let me ask you this question, and the audience are going to be asked this question. Name this person who was born more than 2,000 years ago, who is considered as God by some people, and as a mediator, and he was born on the 25th of December. Now people are going to say that... <laughs> who is this person, if I, if I mention these uh, attributes of this person? Considered as God, born on the 25th of December, taken as a mediator, who would this person be, born 2,000 years ago? People would say automatically now that that is Jesus. Our brothers in humanity would say that that's Jesus. And what if I say that the answer is wrong? Well, then we can <laughs> say produce your proof. All right, wonderful. Now, according to Encyclopedia Britannica, in uh, the ancient times, there used to be a person who was called as Mithra. The Persians, the Romans, the Greeks, the Egyptians, they used to believe in this person, that he was God, he was the son of God, that he was born on the 25th of December. So this was a very prominent faith when Christianity was developing around the Middle Eastern region and they were migrating to Egypt and to the Greek and the Roman Empire. So it so happened that as Christians, the disciples, as they went to different places, they incorporated some of the pagan beliefs of the Romans and the Greeks and the Egyptians. So that is how the 25th of December was attached to as the birth of Jesus. That is how Jesus Christ, a human being, as a prophet, was taken as a God and a son of God and as a mediator. So Christianity, it incorporated the beliefs of the pagan and the polytheistic cultures as it was expanding. So are you telling us now that in no way there's evidence that Jesus, peace be upon him, was born on this day. 
Correct. So according to Encyclopedia Britannica, that's a very uh, valid, a very uh, authoritative source. According to that source, it says that neither the mention of the 25th of December is there in uh, the Bible, nor the disciples they celebrated on the 25th of December. So that's a fact. That's a fact, according to Encyclopedia Britannica. And if you go to the Bible itself, thousands of pages and thousands of verses, there's not a single mention in there about the 25th of December as the birth of Jesus. In fact, it says that when Joseph, when he moved from, uh, from, uh, to uh, Judea and Bethlehem with his uh, you know, future wife, Mary, mother of Jesus, peace be upon her, she gave birth. And around that time, the shepherds, they were going at night to tend their flock of sheep. This is mentioned in the chapter of uh, Luke, chapter 2, verse number 4 to verse number 8. So now a question would be, if shepherds are going out on the 25th of December or around that time, what is the temperature around that time? According to weatheronline.com, the temperature in the December, in the last week of December, it goes to around freezing degrees. And shepherds, they don't, go, they don't go out in that kind of a temperature. So according to Britannica, Encyclopedia Britannica, and according to the biblical sources, Jesus Christ was not born on the 25th of December. Now the next question that arises comes to my mind that is, okay, Jesus, you said that Christians believe that Jesus was God, celebrating Jesus' birth, so are people trying to say that God had a beginning and that God was born? Because if Jesus was God, then God has certain attributes, right? So God was born? Is this what they're espousing to? Well, I mean, I hope all of you agree up there that one of the attributes of God is He is eternal. That means He's neither born, never going to die, don't have parents, doesn't have any kids or children. So if someone is saying that God is born, that means uh, they're just going against the fundamental belief of the eternal nature of God. In fact, if you go back to the Greeks and the Romans, they used to have gods who were born, right? For example, Heraclius, the son of Zeus, the god of the Greeks, he was born on the 25th of December. He also, along with Mithra, so you mentioned along one pagan Mithra, god. Correct. Now another pagan god, whose name is again? Uh, Heraclius, the son of Zeus. Okay, so which yeah. one is it? Is it Mithra or Heraclius? Then, to complicate the picture, Bacchus, the light god of the Romans. He was born on the 25th of December. Now people can Google this, or yes. they can go to the Encyclopedia Britannica, and, and these facts, not fiction, they can go investigate this. Of course, of course. Not my opinion. Go back to the authoritative secular sources. You will find these things. So again, we come back to the, same, uh, to the same notion that as Christianity was spreading to different parts of the world, they incorporated many different ideologies of the foreign cultures, including the 25th of December as the birth of Jesus. Let, let, let's hold off right there. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more discussing Christmas, the origins, here with Dr. Sabil on The Dean Show. We'll be right back. Go ahead and take the books. Put the books in front of you and read them. Read the Quran. Don't be afraid. The question is about whether Muslims are or not good citizens. The Constitution defines what a good citizen is. And the preamble says, We the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, to establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility. Too many Muslims that can say that is a good Muslim. And most Muslims can say that. Most Muslims will embrace that. Most Muslims are good Americans. Back here on The Dean Show, talking about Christmas, Christmas is right around the corner, and we talked about, you gave some facts about Christmas and Jesus definitely not being born on that day, and definitely that there are links connecting it back to the pagan god Mithra, Heraclius, the third one was? Bacchus. Bacchus. These were all gods at that time that the Romans used to worship? They used to worship. I mean, obviously, at one time in history, they may be just human beings, and later on, people attributed them to, you know, divinity, godship. But apparently, they were all born on the 25th of December, according to history. Right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. 
Santa Claus now. You know, we're all told that this uh, guy, big heavy guy, fat guy is going to come down to Trimini, give you some gifts, gifts and et cetera, et cetera. What about this? Where, where does this come from? Again, uh, according to the encyclopedia, again, uh, there used to be a saint called Saint Nicholas in Denmark 300 years after Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. Supposedly, he was a good saint giving uh, gifts to the kids. When he died on the December 6th, people started to you know, recognize his uh, day of his uh, death and they started to give gifts again each year on that day. Later on, Queen Victoria, she changed that day of December 6th to the night of 24th of December. Right? So from that point on, everyone is now kind of celebrating that day and uh, you, know, you have Santa Claus in the mall and everyone is waiting for you know, praying that he could bring their gifts, that he could hear your prayers, he knows if you're a good kid or a bad kid. So that is how that custom came, uh, you know, came into Christianity. Very important thing would be, we are shifting again from God to a person called Santa Claus. We are attributing, we are, we are giving him the attributes of God. Saying that he will know all the seven billion people in the world who is good and who is bad. That means we are telling that this person is all-knowing. Instead of asking from God, we are asking from this person called Saint Nicholas or Santa Claus. So it may have began as a you know, benign, as a fun way of uh, you know, recognizing Saint Nicholas, but again, we are diluting the monotheistic belief of Jesus Christ and shifting it to a human being and giving him those attributes of God. So not everything that's fun necessarily is good. You have to cross-reference and check to make sure it's pleasing to the creator of the heavens and earth. Now when you start giving attributes of the one creator, the one creator that Jesus called us to worship, you start saying this man is all-knowing, you know, he's the person that you're basically giving one of the attributes that only belong to the creator. The same creator that Jesus called people to worship, that one God, now you're setting up a partner next to him, right? That's what's happening, unfortunately. And it's based on a lie, too. It's based on, you know, that, you know, uh, it's based on a lie. And there's some, some uh, people that will say, no, no, I'm not going to, you know, lie to my kids because tomorrow when I really want to tell them about God, they're going to say, well, you told me this fairy tale, and now you want to tell me about the truth, they're not going to accept it. Of course, you know, according to the Quran, according to the Bible, and according to just, you know, us human beings, we know that lying is wrong. Yeah. It doesn't matter for what reason that we are doing it. It's plain and black, uh, you know, it's just wrong to lie. So if you're just saying that, you know, Santa Claus is going to come and bring, you know, through the chimney these gifts and, you know, let's uh, hold on. And when they wake up on the 25th, they have all of these gifts and the parents will say, these were brought by Santa Claus. All of those things, obviously, you know, we as parents and we as human beings, uh, we should refrain from. Yeah. And this holiday around, you know, uh, Santa Claus and all of that, it goes into that, uh, that aspect of lies. Yeah, so we hope we're not hurting anyone's feelings. And for the kids who believe this so long, respect your parents, be good to your parents, and the one who brings good is the creator of the heavens and earth. So do good because God rewards good. Isn't that better? Indeed, indeed. The Christmas tree. Let's talk about this. Where does this come from? Did, uh, does this have any relevance, rev uh, any um, proof for it in the Bible? Was this something that Jesus, he told the people to do? Okay, when it comes to the Christmas trees, and almost all the Christians who are out there, with some ex exceptions, and there are 200 million in the USA, by the way, and 2.1 billion in the world, they celebrate Christmas with the Christmas tree. They bring it out from the forest, or they buy it from, you know, people who bring it out from the forest. They decorate it, they put the gifts in there, and that becomes like a symbol of Christmas. In the USA, close to 40 million Christmas trees are sold each year. 40 around million. This 40 million. 40 million. Mm -hmm. Each Christmas tree, it costs about $50. It's a billion dollar industry. When we look at the fact that there are close to uh, 49 million fellow Americans of ours who don't have enough to eat, 44 million people, um, our fellow Americans, who don't have insurance, and about 15 million Americans, they don't have job, they're unemployed. Right? So when you look into this context and we celebrate with the Christmas tree, 
on the top of it Jesus Christ peace be upon him and or, or his disciples never had anything to do with that tree in fact in the Old Testament there is a verse the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament chapter 10 I think you're going to see this now go ahead chapter 10 verse number 3 and verse number 4 the God of the Bible he says in the Old Testament that the customs of the people they are worthless this is in the Bible God is saying this yes that the customs of the people they are worthless they go to the forest they chop down a tree they bring it home and a craftsman it chisels it uh, he, he, he chisels the tree and then they decorate the tree sounds like the Christmas tree that's the Christmas tree so God of the Bible is condemning the practice of the Christmas tree who my dear fellow uh, Christians out there they are celebrating Christmas with that Christmas tree but if they go back to the Old Testament and look at the commandments of God this is one of the commandments that God has forbidden now now someone's like look you guys you Muslims you Muslims you always trying to mess <laughs> up our good time you know I was just about to have some eggnog with some spice of vodka and we're gonna celebrate families coming together we got all these uh, gifts and that why are you guys messing up why are you guys talking about this we're just trying to have a good time how would you respond to this well my, my response to that uh, wonderful intention of our fellow Christians would be the focus of our life is not a tree it's not a man it is God so anything that we do and we should do should revolve around God so when we look at the teachings of Jesus Christ peace be upon him he always was calling people to the worship of one God and to obey the commandments of God so if you look at from that angle yes we may be having fun but we could still have a nice benign fun without excessive spending uh, without involving into any innovations without uh, without uh, you know all of the drinking and the dancing and all the things uh, immoral things sometimes that may come about in these kind of celebrations and the main thing is that Jesus peace be upon him as a fact was not born on this day he never called people to worship him on this day nor did he ever call people to worship him or to set up any kind of partner with him he called people to worship the one unseen creator the same God that we worship the same God that Jesus worship and this is what basically Islam is called God is calling us to do to in live fact. to live that and to revive that in our lives in fact according to the Quran chapter 51 verse number 56 that the only purpose that God has created humans and jinns is that we should worship him obviously worshiping the one true God if you look at Jesus peace be upon him his main calling of the people is also to worship one God if you look at the gospel of Mark chapter 12 verse number 28 and 29 some people who they came to Jesus Christ peace be upon him and they asked him this very important question that of all the commandments which one is the first commandment and the Jews they used to have 613 commandments so Jesus Christ did not mention that the first commandment is to believe in me as God or son of God and believe in the Trinity and let's do Christmas according to Jesus peace be upon him the first commandment he said that here O Israel the Lord our God he is one Lord worship him with all your heart with all your mind and with all your soul and that is the first commandment so look at this Jesus Christ was calling people to worship one God in the Quran chapter 3 verse number 51 Jesus Christ also mentioned that worship your God and my God who is Allah and that is the straight path if you look at the prophets of the Old Testament Prophet Abraham peace be upon him he did not worship the Trinity he bowed down to the one God Prophet Moses peace be upon him in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse number 4 he said hear O Israel the Lord our God he is one Lord so the message of all the prophets from the Bible and from Jesus and from the Quran has been consistent worship the Creator and not the creation very simple straightforward we're gonna be right back to wrap it up here on the Dean Show this is the Dean this is the Dean Show Obama you can take my daughter to dinner you and my daughter and me
Let me tell you something. It's natural. That's the idea. God created it. And he created us to have a good time. Mm -hmm. We should have a good time. Only with our wives, though. Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world. And most of the converts are women, not men. They see that the rules of Islam, instead of constraining them, the rules set them free. Back here on the Dean Show, and we are talking about Christmas. We talked a little bit about the attributes of the Creator, only worshiping Him, and this was the true message of Jesus. And we talked about the pagan roots. And again, not to offend anybody, this is case sensitive, and we love our brothers in humanity, and we want the best for everybody. So we're talking about this because, as you said, it's not good enough to just have a good intention. It needs to be backed up with knowledge to make sure that it's pleasing to the one who created us because ultimately that's who we want to please, the one creator. So we talked about that. Let's talk about the greeting. As Muslims now, you know, who obviously we love our neighbors and we live amongst the people who we want the best for and we should exchange gifts and we should help our neighbors in doing good. So some Muslims they feel like, hey, it's their holiday, I'm not celebrating it, but I wish the best to them. Merry Christmas to you too, and a happy new year, and all the other fun stuff that goes, fun stuff that goes with it. And you know what, I might even get you a glass of wine. I don't drink it, the Quran says not to drink wine, but you know what, I'm not drinking it, I'll get you a glass of wine because you're my neighbor and I love you. How, what, what do you have you met some Muslims like this? Well, in fact, you know, that's very unfortunate that our fellow uh, Muslims Sometimes they also get in the spirit of uh, this Christmas, which is not bad if you're acknowledging Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as a prophet and trying to follow his teachings, which is submitting to one God, which is fine. However, when we are giving Christians, our Christian friends, a bottle of wine on Christmas, and I have seen some, some people doing that, unfortunately, just to please them and just to acknowledge that uh, we also are with you, they go out of the way and they give something which is forbidden, you know, to give the wine. So in Islam, to drink, to make and to give, they're all forbidden about wine and alcohol and intoxicants. Some Muslims, unfortunately, because they see all of their Christian friends and, you know, having all of this fun, they bring a small tree and they tell their kids, you know, this is, uh, we are also celebrating the birth of Jesus. That is also wrong because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who is appointed as the last and the final prophet, and he's been mentioned in chapter 33, verse number 21, as the best example to follow. He never celebrated his birthday. Jesus Christ never celebrated his birthday, neither any, neither any of the prophets. So if you are going to follow all the prophets, you have to follow their ideology, you have to follow their actions. Right? So when we meet our Christian friends, yes, we acknowledge that this is your holiday, but we love you, just like we love our own uh, uh, brothers and sisters. Out of this love, we would like to correct you or educate you about the message of Jesus and about the message, especially, of Islam. Because isn't it true? Now, if you as a Muslim or you now as a Christian, you say, well, Christians do believe this. Some, many don't, all right? You know, many people just slide in on Sundays and they just go with the flow. This is what our fathers did. But when you explain it to them, they're like, you know what? This doesn't make sense. The whole Trinity, God having a son, God being a man, these things are confusing. So now the Muslims, when they say, okay, Merry Christmas, aren't you acknowledging now that God had a son? You're acknowledging this Trinity, and this is something that in the Quran, the verbatim word of God, this is something that is definitely a no-no. Yeah, it's, it's very much true. When Muslims, when they greet back with the greeting of, you know, Merry Christmas, 
they are acknowledging or they are legitimizing the the sonship of Jesus or the divinity of Jesus or the triune ideology of Christianity. What Muslims could say likewise would be when they are greeted with Merry Christmas, they could say Happy Holidays. And they could again mention, we love Jesus, we honor and respect him. In fact, our book, which is the Quran, sent by God to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a guidance for all of humanity, it mentions Jesus many times with respect, and his message is mentioned here as the message of oneness of God. So we Muslims, we should convey to our fellow Christians that Christianity is a faith about Jesus. And Islam is a faith of Jesus. So if anyone out there, and all the Christians I know, they love Jesus, should you not be following the faith of Jesus? And the faith of Jesus, or the ideology of Jesus, according to the Old Test, uh, according to the New Testament, according to the Quran, is to submit and worship the one Creator. So if you love Jesus, follow His faith. The faith of Jesus was not Christianity; it was Islam. So it's a good opportunity for us now to engage and to educate, to talk to people about the one who's beloved to our hearts, Jesus, peace be upon him, who no Muslim is a Muslim unless we believe in Jesus, but in no way do acknowledge that he was born on this day, that he was God, that he was a literal son of God. God doesn't have children, he doesn't have daughters, he doesn't have a DNA, he doesn't have these attributes that human beings have, he doesn't have a mother, a father, this is not God, this is what human beings do, so this is a good chance to talk to them and to prove to them that look you know we're on the same page we love Jesus but nowhere did Jesus ever call people to worship him so let's move a little bit further and do what you were talking about let's do what Jesus wanted us to do and that's to worship the one God not to worship anyone besides God or set up a partner with God because this is something that obviously God did not sanction and a person is going to earn the displeasure of God yes because we have to die one day when we are standing in front of God on, on the Day of Judgment, our parents, our uh, church, our environment, our friends, they cannot come and save us on the Day of Judgment. When God is going to ask us on the Day of Judgment, what did you believe in? Did you receive the message of the oneness of God? It will be too late for any one of us to come back to this life again and start submitting to the one Creator. So it's very important that we should not get distracted by our family, friends, uh, environment. Just because they are doing something, we should not jump on the bandwagon and start doing that. God has given each single one of a wonderful mind. We should use it, examine the history, examine the scriptures, and especially try to read the Quran, which is the last verbatim word of God. And if you do that, one simple message comes very clear, that God created Adam and Eve, gave them one core message, submit to God. The same message was given to all the prophets, including Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that message, submission to one God in Arabic language, it means Islam. So if you want to follow an ideology of Jesus and Moses and Abraham and all the prophets of God and, uh, and, peace, uh, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, follow their ideology. Their ideology was submit only to one God, which equals Islam. Simple and straightforward, yes. and how if people want to get a hold of you, and you know, if they have some questions about this, say, you know, I think you got it wrong, and they want to talk with you and dialogue with you and um, you know, uh, hook up with you, how can they get a hold of you? Okay, wonderful. Uh, on behalf of Gain Peace, which is a uh, project of the Islamic Circle of North America, we have a live toll free telephone line 800 662 Islam. 800-662-ISLAM. Anyone could pick up a phone, give us a call, and have a nice, friendly conversation with us. And if you would like to know more about Islam and would like to get a free copy of the Quran in English language, we could send you a free copy, no strings attached. So learn Islam from the source and then make up your mind. And we hope and pray that uh, once you read the Quran, you will understand the truth, and the truth is worship the creator and not the creation thank you very much may god almighty the creator reward you we hope to have you back again next time here on the dean show take care nice to be here assalamu alaikum peace be upon all of you alaikum
And that was it for another episode of the Dean Show. Islam says to Islam, Islam says love all mankind. And inside of the love, because we love our brothers in humanity that we want to deliver and educate people with the truth. And you have gotten to see the origins of Christmas and you've gotten to learn that Muslims love, love Jesus, peace be upon him. And it's always been one sender, one recipient, the one creator sent the message to one mankind and it wasn't religions it's always been one religion one way of life and that way of life has been to have a direct connection a relationship with the one who created you to submit yourself entirely wholeheartedly to the one God the same God that Jesus called all of us to submit to nowhere did ever as we talked about did Jesus ever call people to worship him? He never, never expressed that, but he always expressed that you love the Creator, that you worship the Creator, and you never set up a partner with the Creator, and that's the message of Islam. Islam has been there since time immemorial, so why don't you get to know Islam? Get to know your Muslims. Call us, 1-800-662-ISLAM, and until next time, peace be unto you.